can you get rich on rust? We'll find out as two teams of profit-driven car breakers go head-to-head -head in the ultimate test of stripping skill. And salesmanship. 1,500 quick. Could have one and a half. 600 quick. 400 pound. But this is as much Hollywood movie as car breaking competition. Oh my gosh! We've got hair and makeup. So Looks like a big zip. <laughs> <laughs> Exhilarating <laughs> stunts. The bonnet's up. The bonnet is up. Oh no! And steamy romance. Now you've got a lovely face. Well, thank, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Cue the titles. To triumph in this challenge, the teams must make maximum profit from breaking a vehicle that costs more than £50,000 in today's money when it was released. That price tag encompasses all manner of classy motors. But with only two grand to play with, the teams will need to be at their sharpest. Once they've splashed the cash, our strippers will have just three days to dismantle their once pricey donor vehicles at this licensed breakers yard west of London before selling the parts stripped for top dollar. Oh, lovely. The team with the biggest profits will be declared the winners. Taking on this high prestige challenge are two teams for whom it's all about the money, money, money. First up are George and Sheldon. Master of automotive destruction is mechanic extraordinaire George Percy. I was born to break cars. There's nothing I can't do with an angle grinder. Residing over a sales network that stretches from Stanmore to Southern Watford is Sheldon Nichols. Buying a fine motor is like buying a fine wine. You've either got taste or you ain't. They'll be scrapping for stripping supremacy with Ben and Frankie. On the tools is one-man dismantling phenomenon, Yorkshireman Ben Chiamansky. Stripping a car down is child's play. I just wish someone had let me put them back together. Sales and distribution falls to business bulldog, Frankie Oatway. I love animals. I really do. I really love them. If you're referring to ponies and monkeys, of course. And yes, that does mean money. First job for the teams is to decide on a donor vehicle that cost in excess of 50 grand in today's money when new. George and Sheldon are in a decisive mood. Well, what's the budget? Two grand. Two grand? We're not going to touch nothing for that. I was thinking, I don't know, something either Italian or German. German? German. It's got to be. Yeah. You know me, I'm a BMW man. So what do you reckon, what, an M3? Yeah, it's got to be an M3. When it comes to BMWs, a simple letter M is a hallmark that guarantees speed and excitement. BMW's high-performance division specialises in giving cars the X factor. In 1986, they notched up one of their greatest achievements. The M3 was voted best handling car of 1997 by Car and Driver magazine. The second generation M3s hit showrooms in 1992 with a price tag of over £34,000, which equates to more than 52,000 quid in today's money. A 3.2 litre engine ensured the car accelerated from 0 to 60 in five and a half seconds. M3s break well, but many drivers mistreat their beamers, vastly reducing the resale value of the engine. As the boys begin searching for a breakable M3, it becomes apparent that George is near death yeah. with the dreaded man flu. Hi, I'm ringing about the um, M3. Right, and what sort of damage has she had? Does she still run? Do you, uh, do you think you can do this one? Because I. I just feel rough, mate. So Sheldon heads out on a solo mission. Lovely part of the world, this. And it appears Northamptonshire's gain could be Stanmore's loss. I think when the time's ready, I can move my empire to somewhere like this. In fact, Sheldon's in his comfort zone on all counts today. I mean, I do know a little bit about the M3s. I used to have one a few years back. 
The entry in question belongs to heavy plant fan Darren Jones. It's in uh, metallic purple. Miles, mileage is not excessive, but it has been in an accident and it is a financial write off. It's got good interior though, and the engine is clean and it's all good running order. I'd like to see it go for a couple of grand. I am open to offers and I need it gone really. All right, Darren, how are you doing? Good, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. Um, Here it is. Most of the bits are with it. It's not, probably not as bad as it first looks. Are there any other mechanical issues on it you know about? I think there's an issue in the diff or the drive shaft area. What about the engine? How does she run? Engine's all good. I'll tell you what, the keys are in it. Yeah. I'll get you a cup of coffee and you help yourself. All right, all right, lovely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Should two sugars, yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Hello, mate. So, what's the car like? Is there anything wrong with it? Yeah, yeah, she's all right. What can I tell you? It's a, it's an M3. What's left of it? And what's the engine sound like? <laughs> yeah, that sounds sweet. So, what's it like through the gears? Yeah, I was going to try that now, George. Yeah, give me a minute, mate. It's all good, yeah? George, I can hardly hear you, mate. You're, you're, you're breaking up a bit. Sheldon! I'll speak to you when I get back. Bye. Don't feel right. Don't, don't feel right at all. Oh, fantastic. It's getting better by the minute. Back at base, Frankie is inspired even if he can't remember which car he's envisaging. Ben, I'm seeing luxury. I'm seeing beauty. I'm seeing elegance. I'm thinking Mercedes, Ben. I'm thinking a convertible Mercedes. Well, the only one I can think of is an SL. It sounds good to me, and I mean, I, I agree with you. I think we should go for it. What? What Frankie's suggesting is the Mercedes SL, or sports lightweight. A mainstay of the company's range for over half a century. There have been just five full-size incarnations of the SL, and many consider the fourth generation 380 SL to be one of the best looking Mercs of all time. Part of the R107 series, the 380 SL stayed in production from 1980 to 1985, and was powered by an all aluminium 3.8 litre V8 engine, renowned for its durability. It didn't come cheap though. A 1982 model cost over 19 and a half grand. More than 58,000 in today's money. The 380SL is fast becoming a collectible classic and parts will certainly be in demand. But increasing demand can inflate the price of even the roughest scrapper. Ben and Frankie's search for an affordable SL has led them to Southall in West London where it's a tale of two convertibles. Do you know what I really love about coming to buy cars with you, Frank? Go on, mate. It's the glamorous locations. No, it is a little bit special, Randy, Ben. I'll give you that. They're nice, aren't they? The, well, I'll be the judge of that. Uh, do you want to go get the keys? I'll go and get the keys. I'll bring them out, right? Holding the keys is car dealer... Jags. The boys have come to see two Mercedes SLs. One of them's a 91 in red, lovely car. Starts and drives, it's got a long MOT on it. The other one is a project and it needs work. I'm looking for two grand for the red one and 1,600 pound for the older model. Is it gonna be a V8? It's a lot of motor though, Ben, isn't it? Oh, three litres straight six, Frankie, I'm not interested. Well, the red one, it's gonna be a future classic, but they're cheap to buy at the moment, a roadworthy model. So would we make any money off that? Probably not. Well, this one, though, it's sort of into classic territory already. Did you know SL? Do you know what it stood for? No. Nah. Sports lightweight. And I can see this one is even lighter, thanks to nature. Is there anything on the horizon here with this? Like, looking at it from like a positive point of view. Bodywork, shot. Wheels, not desirable. Chrome, iffy. There's pros and cons, you know, with those two motors, because one of them sort of uh, is a bit of a go, and the other one is, uh, is not. With the older one, I think it can place the parts a little bit easier. 
Does it work? <coughs> Arm works. Well, the auto works, doesn't it? Uh, mm. Let's have a look under the bonnet. I don't know, Ben. Something tells me this is our little golden nugget. Look at that, look. 3.8 litre V8, doesn't work. What do you reckon then? Two contenders. If I was buying a car to drive, that one. If I was buying a car to brake, I'd go for this all day long. All day long. Back in North Hants, Sheldon knows that two grand doesn't buy a lot of Beamer. So he's pulling out all the stops to get an abused M3 with a very saleable engine at a knockdown price. All the M3 bits that are on it is the only the engine and gearbox. And I don't know what the gearbox is like because I can't drive it. Okay. The diff shot, front suspension, I don't know what's been done to that because the rack's not attached to one side. Right. This is like an M1.5 from where I'm standing. Let's get down to the money. What sort of money did you have in mind for it? Well, I was looking for around two grand for it. Um, you ain't going to get that, mate. Well, what, you, what have you got in mind then? About 800 pounds. I can't do that. Engine, which is good. Interior, hood. You've got loads of decent stuff on here. What is your best? I'll go up to a thousand pounds. Wow. That's just kicking me where it hurts. No. I, well, can't I don't do want to kick you where it hurts, but the only sweet thing in this deal at the moment is the coffee I'm drinking. Sensibly, what about if we meet somewhere in the middle? It's 1,500 quid, and that, that is my last price. I can't go any lower. 1,500? OK. All right. Yeah. yeah. That one bruised and battered M3 with opposable steering, purchased for 1,500 quid. Meanwhile, in Southall, Frankie needs to seal the deal on an unroadworthy Merc SL. So what one do you want? What do you mean, what one I want? Red one or the, or the rusty one? Well, why do I want the red one? It's a better car. What do you mean it's a better motor? Well, it's it's two grand. Car. I don't want to part of a two grand. <laughs> I want something a little bit cheap, Jags, which is it's, why... It's rusty, it don't run. Well. That's the reason I want it though, Jags. I'm looking at sort of a, a grand. What, for the rusty one? Yeah. Nah, it's worth more than that. Why not? So That's a collectible it? car, that is. Oh, it's a uh, collectible, yeah, though, is it? Yeah, collectible. Oh, it was rusty five minutes ago. Yeah, but it's a collector's car now. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, now, now you're selling. Now you're selling. So You've it is. Yeah, oh, yeah, now you're going to try and top me up. Buy the red one then. Why would I want to buy the red one, though, Jags? Give me £1,300 for it. 1300 quid. What's the matter with you? What are you on? Cheap car. Some... I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Jazz. I have got in my pocket here, look, 12 and a quarter. That's 1,225 nickel to me and you. For that motor out there, I don't care if it's collectible, debatable, or indestructible. I'm taking it back to London. You're going to take that, and you're going to give me the correct paperwork. It's all there. It's just all there, can't it? You've got a deal. You've got a deal? Yeah, we've got a deal. If you like your Mercs rusty and rough with an engine as yet untested, that's 1,225 quid well spent. Challenge to max profits by breaking motors that came with an inflation-adjusted price tag of over 50 grand, both teams have returned to base with their scrappers. They have just three days to strip them of the most valuable parts that they must then flog to the highest bidder. Any unsold parts will be weighed in for scrap and chucked in the crusher. Before the stripping commences, there's just time for the teams to check out their opponent's donor vehicle. Frankie, Ben, looks like there's been a bit of a mix-up, isn't there? I thought the challenge was 50 grand when new, not 50 quid now. You boys need a couple of hours, maybe go sort yourself something else out? No, 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 we are happy with our... We're happy, aren't we? Yeah, well, maybe. This is a cult classic. True enough, Ben, but, I mean, this has got more holes than a kilo of Swiss cheese. We've added holes. That is a pile of dough sitting here, brothers, I've got to tell you. The wings are wonderful, and I mean, I mean, that chrome, look at it, look, I mean, it's like something, it's like it sparkles in the, in the world of, of Merc. And as for that engine, we'll say no more. Have you heard it run? Funny you should say that. Not as such, exactly. Right. Not at all, but we're full of confidence. <laughs> You're full of something, all right. Well, we'll at least feast our eyes on this aubergine terror. I mean, it's an M3, well done, but a soft top, Frankie, this is a hairdresser's car if I've ever seen one. Yeah, well, that's something I can't really particularly comment on, I've got to be honest. This is a piece of German engineering, mate. I've got one of these. I'll rest my case, George. So, Ben and Frank...